Hey guys, I uh, got a nice quick one here, 2003 Toyota Camry, and the complaint is no AC. Now, we're gonna do a quick test here, we're gonna find the problem really quickly, and the main reason for this video is I actually wanted to point out something that uh, one of my viewers commented on, and I thought it was a really, really good idea. So, we're gonna do that. So, like anything else, first step, Verify the complaint. So we turn the AC on, uh, push the button, and I don't feel anything cool. It starts blinking. Now if I go out, I do have the AC machine hooked up. And basically, it's not plugged in, I'm basically using it as gauges. As you can see, the high side is just over 100, and the low side's at 110, and they're not moving any at all. So. This tells us that the compressor for sure is not kicking in, but also it tells us that is more than enough um, refrigerant in there. There's more than enough pressure for that to allow the compressor to turn on. So let me quickly shut this off. I'll actually turn the key on because we got our scanner hooked up. Turn the blower off, keep that going. Get our scanner hooked up. We'll do a test, but to give you a rough idea so that you don't have to spend all the time to suck it down to, to know for sure, if you look at the static pressure, now ideally you want to do this when the engine hasn't been running, when everything's kind of, uh, you know, um, ambient temperature. And uh, I don't have it up on the wall anymore. Where are we? Everything's chaotic right now. But, oh. Uh, you probably won't be able to read that, but we are uh, 85 Fahrenheit in here or so. So what you want to do is the low side should be a bit higher than the ambient temperature in Fahrenheit. So if it's 85, we'd want to see around 95. We're closer to 110, but the whole engine compartment's hotter, right? It's been running for a bit, so we we'll expect to see them a little higher. Pressure and temperature are related. So that's a general rule of thumb. If you see your static rest pressure to be roughly around the ambient temperature in Fahrenheit, it's not to say that it's a good amount of charge or it's fully charged up, but it's definitely more than good enough to turn that compressor on. Because remember, we got nothing. So next easiest thing, we'll come down here let me just shut this off for a second. It's a little noisy. Um, but it's good to have a charger on there so you don't kill the battery when you have the key uh, the key in the on position for a while. So we're going to active test uh, the um, compressor clutch. We don't care about data. Kimmin. Kimmin. There we go. So we're going to hit on. So I hear the relay click. I hear the fan come on. I didn't hear anything slamming down there. But now what we do, hopefully we can get some light on there. Because the engine's not running, if this did lock up, I should not be able to turn this face. And I can. So that means our compressor for sure is not locked up. Well, let's check to see if we're getting any power down there. So I got, there's a two wire connector down there. One wire goes to ground, uh, might be hard to see. And the other wire is the power wire coming from the relay. So I got my back prober in there. We'll get our, eh, hmm, where can I stick this? That should be a good spot right there. Test our equipment. Okay, we're on a good ground. Now that relay is cycling a little bit, but we should see something. If I can get this in there. Okay. I got nada. Well, 
what if I'm not making a good connection? We always, can I? Sweet, I think I can prop that. We always wanna test our equipment. So if I can do this without disturbing that, and it lights. So that means we are making a connection. It's lighting because it's going through the coil winding and finding a ground because we're on power. So we know we made connection and we know with that being commanded that it's not getting power down there. So we gotta trace power. Now, easiest thing to do is to look at the relay. Thankfully on these older guys, uh, they are labeled nicely in, in these fuse boxes. So we are, if you can, let me wake you up for a second. So if you can see that right there, it says MG clutch. Now, <laughs> here's the moment of genius. I can shut this off. So what we're gonna do, oh, let me pull this stuff out so I don't accidentally forget about it. Nice quick little thing. Let's start off by checking that relay, right? Now, so what we can do is we can pull it out, we can hook up a, a power probe to the pins 85 and 86 and check for continuity on 30 and 87. But you know what, that takes a little bit of time. Now, what one guy commented and mentioned to me and I'm like, wow, that's such an awesome idea, is they switched it with the horn relay. Now, of course, in order to do this, the relays need to be the same type, but it's an amazing idea because it's such a quick test. Right here is the horn relay. So horn relay is right here. Uh, AC compressor relay is right there. And as you can see, they're a little different, but hey, you know what? If the pin layout's the same, that's all that matters. So not only will that test it, um, the, the relay, whether it closes or not, but it'll also test it whether or not it's capable of handling current. Because if we just close that relay manually and test it for continuity, we're not really passing current through there, right? We're not load testing it. <laughs> Whereas putting it in the horn spot, that will load test it. So, of course, before we do that, we need to test this guy. That's easy to do. Our horn most certainly works. So, we grab our pliers. Pull that out. Of course, again, we want to make sure, test our equipment, make sure we're on the right one. We are, most certainly. So now we grab this guy. And we look at the two. And get you kind of like that. And if you look there, hopefully that's focusing those will work they are the same layout we can plug the ac compressor one in in place of the horn now of course if these are the exact same style say if they're both black relays the exact same relays you, you put some paint on one of them right the one that you suspect is bad so we will plug this in like there now yeah <laughs> now for the magic look at that that's a bad relay and if you, I'll try and get you closer and I'll push it. So this is the thing that's nice about this. It was clicking, clicking just because it's clicking doesn't mean it's good, but it fails on a load test. Who knows, maybe if we tested that with a multimeter, maybe you might get a relatively low, um, Resistance because maybe it's good enough for a multimeter, but it's definitely not good enough for a horn and definitely not good enough for that AC compressor. So uh, quickly, let's grab this and you go in like he's so, eh, if I can get you in there. Let's pull all our stuff out of the way. We don't want anything falling in. Well, actually, before we do all that, we can go Back to our test. Yep. All data, we don't really care. And when we hit this test, not only should we hear our relay click, and of course the fan will come on in this instance, but 
this magnetic clutch here will make a much louder click. So I'm gonna hit the button and I'll get you a little closer. Hopefully you heard that. So if I reach down here, hopefully you can see that, I cannot turn that. Then if I turn that off, then I go back down, then it is turning. So that means we can do, fix this AC, get it going, which is good, because <laughs> Friday night of a long weekend, uh, or Saturday night of a long weekend, end of the day, we're at 4.50. Oh, I don't feel like staying late, getting in trouble with the missus, <laughs> trying to put a compressor in this late in the day. So, we'll fire it up. Put the, the fan on, AC on, and It's still blinking. How come it's still blinking? Well, that sucks. Now let's go back. Oh, maybe it does need a relay as, or uh, maybe it does need and oh, it's going to do a bad thing. Maybe it does need a compressor as well. Uh, that's too bad. Wouldn't be entirely surprised because it's, uh, hmm, it did lock up on its own. Weird, let me set you down for a second. Okay, so I just needed two hands to, uh, although that feels cold now. That's definitely cold now, that's not blinking. Huh. Might have a bad connection there as well. Or maybe it just needed a reset. I don't know. But it's definitely cold. That's solid. And if we look at our pressures, we got low side just above 30, high side's right around 200. So a lot's definitely working. Huh. I don't love sticking my digits down there. Um, light, 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 light. Ah, my magnet's falling out. All right. Yeah. 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 Oh, I don't like doing this. Okay, let's go. This guy's a little safer. Let's see. If I can't make it kick out. No. Yeah, seems to be working now good. Anyways. Let's shut this off. It's definitely nice and frosty in here. So there you have it. Nice cool trick. Someone passed on to me and I want to pass it on to you. You know what, rather than just blindly swapping relays, put it, if you can, put it in place of the horn. That way, you know for sure. This one here, it's all it needed, was a bad relay. Funny thing about relays is, I uh, sure seem to be getting an awful lot of bad relays lately. I, you know, the last 10, 15 years, barely encountered a single bad relay. Uh, the last week and a half, oh, probably five or six of them. Wow, five for sure. And same thing with this one. Just another bad relay. We'll swap that out, get another one for that horn. And this lady can have air conditioning because it is hot. Anyways, I want to pass that on. Nice, cool little trick, I thought. Uh, hopefully it helps you out. Uh, let me know what you guys do for relay testing. Uh, if you found out something else that, that works really quick, um, because it sure beats manually jumpering and all that. So as always just want to say thanks for watching We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now